know just forehand form, how to hit those angles to get a little bit of distance out of it, but also staying safe. Hole one, it is 244 feet. Now this, it is just screaming a backhand, baskets up to the left. So let's just go ahead, knock one down. But say any forehand is going to start with a good grip. If you don't have a good grip on the disc, it's just going to fall out of your hand. It's not going to have the result that you want. Um, and so you can go either just like a two finger stack grip right here, and then just have your thumb kind of similar to the backhand, just on top of this little rim right here where it meets, or you can just go a one finger grip. I prefer this one finger grip. It's probably not gonna have as much power as possibly the two would, but this just feels more comfortable for me. Um, so here we go. Got hole two, it's 268 feet up and to the right. I did find my avalanche, a little nine speed. Let's try and get one more. All right, well, they both turned out pretty solid. Got one, pretty much pinned it, and the Raider ended up right there. All right, so one key difference with the backhand and the forehand is that when you're throwing the forehand, your eyes never have to leave the target. And so it's pretty much point and shoot. Wherever you're looking, wherever you aim, you know, you have the right disc selection. That's probably where it's gonna go. And so I find that the forehand is easier to learn, more so like, you know, hitting a baseball or swinging a tennis racket compared to a backhand throw that is fairly unnatural. Right, hole four, it's 305 feet. It's in between these trees at the end. You can go backhand down the middle or forehand down the left side with a little bit of a flip. And when you're throwing forehands, when you're getting to that hit point, first off, you have to create separation. And then you want your hips in front of your shoulders and then your elbow just a little bit behind your shoulders and your wrist behind that. And so with that separation, we have now created lag. And so because of that lag, you are gonna get that time to really pull through and then get that little whip effect at the end of your throw. Here we go. All right, hole five is 285 feet. It is dead straight ahead. And so once you have a nice grip on the disc, you're creating separation. It's forehand is really about the angle control on the disc. It is touchy. And so the flippier of a disc you're throwing or the slower speed, the touchier it's going to be. And so if you're throwing a flippier disc, you're gonna have to release it on a more hyzer. And sometimes that can be substantial depending on how flippy the disc is. So here we go. We're gonna try a five speed compass and definitely gonna have to drop this down on a good bit of hyzer. Go a little bit more stable play and try the time lapse. Hole six, 354 feet. It is just around the corner up there. And so we're gonna go forehand with the trespass, nice and low. Put it about 40 long. All right, hole 8A, 215 foot, par three. The basket is just up and to the left. We're just gonna go backhand with the envy. All right, gave it a little run. I guess it came up just short. Honestly, not sure, but great toss.
upright, hole nine. It's a 260 foot par three. We're just gonna go forehand around the corner. Uh, let's do it. All right, that was a pretty solid round. So just a quick little recap. Uh, start off with a grip that works for you. And so could be a two finger grip, could be the one finger grip. Just find something that's gonna work for you. And I definitely prefer somewhat of a flatter profile disc just because it's more comfortable and the thumb for the forehand, something real domey, probably isn't gonna feel great in the hand, but that's up to your preference. And then make sure you're getting that nice separation between your hips, your chest, and your elbow so you can create that lag and get that whip effect towards the end of your shot. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. And as always, thanks to my sponsors, Neptune Discs and Spike Heiser Dies, and I'll catch you next time.